So welcome to this uh, video lecture, the first one of lecture 21. Um, I'm going to try to keep these videos to maybe five minutes or 10 minutes each so that you can easily pick up and, uh, um, and continue later. Um, so let's start with uh, what we did last time on Friday. Um, we looked at these first order ordinary differential equations and derived um, after we had used uh, Euler's method and um, the midpoint method, we derived in general the runge kutta method. And uh, we did that for um, second order. And then I gave you the coefficients for this fourth order runge kutta, um, which is really the gold standard for differential equation solving. Um, first order differential equation in this case. But as you'll see um, this week, that actually doesn't uh, limit us nearly as much as, as you might think based on uh, calculus. So let's see what we can improve um, on this Runge-Kutta method. So just as a reminder, um, or first order Runge-Kutta, um, or, or fourth order Runge-Kutta, um, use these four terms that it adds to a previous yn to get to the next yn plus one. Those are based on those four k um, coefficients, or k values, that are function evaluations. Um, and they are evaluated at different points in time, um, and with different values for y, and essentially they give us the derivative, right? And so we figured out that um, there's an, a, a large set of coefficients that can satisfy this, um, and so we picked this particular set here, um, which is the standard for uh, for Omerkuta calculations. And we went to, we, we saw a different one that had the three eighths, which had smaller errors, um, but what we'll do today is figure out how to um, make this even more efficient. So um, the algorithm that we that we used was this uh, solve RK4, um, which uh, um, which implements this this Runge-Kutta fourth order method. So if we um, load this function and then plot what we get, uh, this is the same thing we saw on Friday. So you see that our points are nicely on the line with the exact solution of our differential equation. We're still looking at our e to the minus. Um, t squared over 2, which is the exact solution of this differential equation. And so the difference between the exact solution and the solution that we obtained is at the order 10 to the minus 7, 6 10 to the minus 7. So that's great. Um, that was on our exponential function. Um, in uh, the case of a, a sine and a cosine, we can do the same thing. And so now you see that um, we can also follow this um, rapidly fluctuating function. But one of the problems is that now our error is also fluctuating. So and sometimes we're, you know, we're, we're right on the exact value and our error is zero, but then our error fluctuates along with the period of oscillation here. So that leads us to, can we improve this algorithm? Um, and one way we can improve this is by, ch by changing the step size. So as you see above here, um, this function doesn't vary as quickly. So if it doesn't vary as quickly, can we not take just smaller steps? We've given it, this function the same step size all across the domain from zero to two. Um, here, might we not want to increase or to take smaller steps in the places where the function is changing quickly and not as much at the zero crossings where the function is essentially going linearly across zero. So um, the approach we're going to take here is um, this adaptive step approach where we, where we would like to change the step as we go along. Um, so that will move us a little bit away from the syntax we've used in the past where we've created a lin space of t points at which we evaluate the function, evaluate the solution. So now we'll just give it a, a starting time and an ending time and we'll have the, um, the algorithm determine what steps to take. So one way in which we could approach this is similar to our bisection algorithm for finding roots or the trapezoid rule for doing the integrals, and that's starting and solving this problem with a step size h, one fixed step size, and then evaluating the problem with a step size h over 2, and seeing when the, uh, the, the error that we obtain is smaller than a certain tolerance. Um, however, that means that we have to solve the entire differential equation over the entire time domain um, each time for each 
um, step size. And so we can't take advantage of some of the benefits that, for example, the trapezoid rule had, where we could have a recursive algorithm um, that uh, gets us to the next stage based on the output of the previous stage. So we wouldn't be able to do that, and so that would lead to a lot of function evaluations. Instead, what we're going to do, since there is freedom in those coefficients for Ongakuta methods, um, we can choose a set of coefficients such that there's a lot of overlap between the fourth and fifth order evaluation. And what we'll do then is we'll use, we'll calculate one y n plus one based on the fourth order prediction, and we'll also calculate another value z n plus one um, based on the fifth order Rungakuta coefficients. And because there's a lot of overlap between the coefficients, that means that we don't have to do a lot of extra function evaluations. Um, essentially, we get the fifth order calculation for free with the fourth order calculation. Now, why is this useful? Um, we know that uh, the fourth order will be accurate to order h to the fifth, and the fifth order will be accurate to order h to the sixth. So if there's a difference between or, between, uh, or y n plus one and our z n plus one, that difference will be of order h. And so we can use that to determine a better value for our step size h. And so that is um, the approach we're going to take here. Um, and that's essentially the, um, the Rumakuta fielberg um, approach. And uh, so it combines this fourth order and fifth order um, approach to, to obtain uh, a correction to the step size. And so what we'll do then is we'll start with a um, an, an initial step size and we'll have the algorithm figure out what the best step sizes to continue um, going along with. Um, this of course looks horrible um, in terms of the coefficients. This is a very specific set of coefficients that is uh, relevant for this rungakuta failberg um, method. It doesn't matter where those numbers come from exactly. Um, the important thing is that they look the same as any other Rungakuta methods. We, ha we have our K1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, so there's, there's six of them, even though there's only f it's only fifth order. But as you'll see in our fourth order correction, so in our fourth order next step, y n plus 1, we get four terms here. If you were to add up those four coefficients, those b um, sub i values, you'll see that they add up to 1. So that's our fourth order term here. Um, and our fifth order term has five terms here. Um, and again, if you add up all of those coefficients, they'll add up to one. Uh, so those are both um, Rungkuta methods that happen to use the same um, a sub i j and c sub i coefficients. So the b's are different, but these coefficients are the same. So the difference now between y n plus one and z n plus one, if we take the absolute value um, or, or the norm uh, to turn this into a positive number, we can use this together with the current step size, h sub n, the tolerance that we want to obtain, oops, the tolerance that we want to obtain for each step, the precision that we, toler that we uh, expect, to correct our current h sub n and form a new h sub n plus one. That will be the, the next step size that we'll use in the next iteration. So we can, of course, implement this um, in an algorithm. This is essentially the same thing as before, with one exception. So now we take t0 and t1, the beginning time and the end time as input. We have a tolerance. And because, of course, um, a, a very small tolerance might lead to a large number of iterations, we'll also limit that number of iterations. So we'll start um, by putting our times and our y and z's in, um, in uh, np arrays, numpy arrays, um, and we'll calculate our initial step size based on our maximum number of iterations that we allow. So this should be smaller than the step size that we will be happy with. And then we go into a loop. We stop our loop as soon as we reach the time t1, or if we have um, in a larger number of iterations than we want. So then um, we calculate our next time, ti plus one, um, we calculate our k's, or i, um, or y at i plus one, that's our fourth order term, and then our z at y plus one, that's our fifth order term, and then if 
we have a, uh, um, a non-zero difference between y and z, um, then we can use that to correct our age. So we find a new value for age. And then we go, of course, through that loop again, increment or i, to keep track of the number of iterations. And uh, if at the end i is equal to the, the maximum number, number of iterations that we accept, then that means that we failed this while condition on account of that number of iterations. So that means that we didn't converge. And of course, we return here also our values for t, not just the values for y, because we have to know at which time values those y values are relevant. So that's our algorithm. Um, you know, it looks a little bit messier with all those numbers, but you know, they're, they're just numbers, they're just coefficients. Um, we can apply this to our previous function that gave us the exponential of e to, uh, e to the minus t squared over two um, between zero and two in time. And so I'll have a lin space here to plot the exact solution, but then I'll get the t1 solution variable which will include, which will um, hold all of the values um, for the times at which we actually evaluated um, the function with the Runge-Kutta method. So we can uh, solve this, and what you'll see is that we start here at this initial point. There's actually a second point there, which takes a very small step, but then it immediately jumps to this time 0 0.7, 0 0.8, um, and then it starts to take smaller steps. So it's it's true that we can take a very large step in the beginning with a precision that um, is set by the tolerance, uh, which was 10 to the minus 6. So in merely, let's see, we can print the error and I uh, print here the number of steps that we've actually had to take. So in, okay, let's have a think here, it's busy. So in 11 steps, it reaches um, that time 2.0 and it actually overshoots here because uh, it, uh, it happens to take a step right before here. So in 11 steps um, and an average step size that's 0 0.18, um, it takes, it, it finds the, the solution at a, a time um, t equal to. Now if you remember previously um, we used 25 steps here so we can do this in approximately half or, or better than half the number of steps. We can also do this, and, and you'll see that here in uh, our uncertainty, this tolerance is, uh, is driven by our 10 to the minus 6 as well. So we can do this for our sine and cosine. Um, so the cosine is the exact solution here. We can take this uh, algorithm, let it run. Again, we see that it overshoots in time. It goes a little bit beyond 60, which is our normal endpoint. Um, and now, instead of 120 steps, um, it turns out that we're, um, we're doing this in about 126 steps. And one of the things you'll see, though, is that the periodic nature of our step size um, has changed in, uh, or the, the periodic nature of our error due to the equal step size has changed here. And so now we do have some behavior here um, that is probably more related to the fact that maybe we happen to fall with our steps always um, on the rising edge or on the, the peak of the function. Um, but as you can see, there's no strong periodic dependence anymore here as there was before. So that's the advantage of these adaptive step methods. And of course here, the variation is, is still very periodic. If we were to go from, a, um, if we were to evaluate a function where this frequency changes, and changes for example by a factor of 10, um, then we would see that the step size will start to change um, by a factor of 10 as well. Um, maybe that's something I'll demonstrate in the next video. Okay, that's it for this one. Uh, so um, just go on to the ne next video or take a break if you need to.